All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about Philippines infrastructure. Is it a deal breaker for a lot of expats who are gonna move out to the Philippines? Stick around and we're gonna discuss it. All right, guys, as, as you know, I just got back from Japan and of course we're talking about probably some of the best infrastructure worldwide. I mean, they are so advanced and so modern and really into their robotics and electronics. I mean, so much so that they have an entire district area that is just nothing but like electronics, which was um, an amazing uh, thing to see. Flash forward, we get back to the Philippines and we're back into uh, kind of more reality. Well, this is where I live and this is what there is. Prior to me getting back, there were two brownouts. Now, granted, this is pretty rare even for the Philippines, but here in Dumaguete, maybe not. But there were two brownouts, all day brownouts. And luckily, we missed them. So when we got back, we're like, all right, you know, we missed the scheduled brownouts. Everything's great. Uh, last night, I guess something happened with the water, but we woke up this morning, no water. Uh, how soon it'll be fixed, I don't know. It has nothing to do with my landlord. My landlord's great. Uh, he's always on top of things. Um, I love where I live. So it has nothing to do with that. It's just kind of Philippines infrastructure. And that's really what we're going to discuss today because it might be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Now, if you are somebody, for example, Mai and I really like to walk. I mean, when we were in Japan, we were walking 20,000 steps a day. Our smart watches were going into overtime with all the walking and exploring we were doing. And it's great exercise. But, you know, you get back to the Philippines, guess what? Sidewalks are almost non-existent. Or if they do have them, people are literally parked on them. There's, uh, they put signs in front of their store business right on the sidewalk. They're in disrepair. They're big holes. They're all crumbled. People use it again to park their motorbikes and people park right up on the curb. So can you count on it as a place to walk safely? Not really, not unless you're going to be in one of these expat bubbles that I have mentioned before, like Cebu IT Park, Business Park, Mactan Newtown, uh, and Manila BGC, Makati, Ilo Ilo, places like that. Otherwise, for the most part, it's really hard to find good sidewalk to walk on or good safe places to walk. And, you know, for example, when we were in Japan, we saw so many people you know, on their bicycles. Here in the Philippines, not so much. When you do, I really worry about the safety sometimes because there really is no designated place for them to technically ride their bike. I mean, are they? I see them on a daily basis. Uh, not so many foreigners, once in a blue moon, but it is a bit uh, different. It's not uh, exactly safe. So if you're somebody who's big into walking and you require the use of sidewalks or you're uh, physically disabled and you need a sidewalk to get around on for your walker, your cane, uh, your wheelchair, then you're going to have to live in one of these little expat bubbles. And if you're somebody who's big into biking, well, you know, I was big into mountain biking. I had lived in Colorado for years and I was really into it for a while. Ended up, of course, selling it. And I was actually excited when I got here. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a bike again. I'll start biking. You know, it's great exercise. No. When I saw the conditions and what I had to work with, I was like, yeah, I, I guess biking is over for me. So there are a lot of things that are deal breakers for people. For example, here, since I've lived here, again, not here as in this apartment, but just in the Philippines, you know, brownouts, uh, water outages, internet being out for days. Um, there's this, any one of these things uh, can happen on a semi-regular basis and it can be really frustrating. When I was working online, when I first got to the Philippines, I had internet at home. But I had actually mapped out and, and got hold of a co-working space, a shared working space, where if something happened, I could get over there and work and have, you know, a generator and internet uh, backup and everything just in case. And luckily I did because several occasions where 
I was scheduled to teach English online. I was, I was teaching English online at this point. I think this was back in 2018, something like that. I had to walk over to the uh, co-working space and I had to, you know, pay the 500 peso fee for the day or whatever it was, you know, what, not expensive or anything, but still a hassle to have to leave my house and go pay and go set up a, a little workspace somewhere else. So there are a lot of uh, infrastructure can be a real deal breaker. If you're somebody who's really into health food, you're really into, you know, you need this vitamin, you need um, your supplements, you need your uh, whole food type places, you know, you will struggle here because it is uh, difficult to get a lot of the things that you uh, have become accustomed to. So when you get to the Philippines, just keep an open mind that the infrastructure is not really so great here. Uh, it is in the different uh, expat bubbles because some people will leave a comment saying, well, hey, I live in BGC, it's phenomenal. Yeah, but you're living in an area of what I call an expat bubble. And nothing wrong with that. In fact, I highly encourage that. If you're a single guy coming out here for the first time, this is kind of where you want to start your Philippines journey is one of these expat bubbles. By the way, if you're coming out here and you're going to live, contact my friend Mike Ross. He can help you get in touch with a local agent who will set you up with your next rental or even a condo or home purchase. His information is on the screen, email, website, and U.S. phone number. Get hold of him today so he can help you out. Back to the video. So, yeah, there are a lot of things that you may have to give up. And if you're not willing to give up some of those things or you're not willing to compromise, then for a lot of people, the Philippines can turn into what I call a perfect destination to find you a good woman and then go off and go live somewhere else. I know several expat buddies that have come here. They say, Jill, this place is great. The people are friendly. They speak English. I think the women are the best in the world. But with the infrastructure and the way things are, I really don't want to live here. This is not uh, the place for me. So a lot of them come here. You get the prize. You get the Filipina. And then they go off and they go live in Thailand or Malaysia or Vietnam or Tokyo. I met, uh, you know, there was people in the, uh, Tokyo. In fact, I have a buddy, uh, David, who married a Filipina, lived in Tokyo for years and then actually moved back to the Philippines. But a lot of people just say, you know what, Filipinas, I agree, they're, they're the best. But the Philippines itself is not really for me. Uh, again, the, I am not uh, trying to insult any Filipino or the Philippines in general. I think the Philippines has a lot of enduring qualities to it and a lot of beauty. Like some of the beaches just have been, I've seen that are just amazing. The snorkeling some places have been amazing. Uh, some of the waterfalls that I've hiked to have just crystal blue water, just the most refreshing beautiful sights I've ever seen. Um, so as far as nature, there are some ama there's some amazing beauty. And the, the people are just so friendly and approachable. And English, I mean, gosh, this is why a lot of people come here. And that and the, of course, easy visa. Now, up until recently, people have had no issue staying here just on a tourist visa forever. Now, they're getting a little more difficult. Uh, my understanding is right after one year, they really want to scrutinize a bit more, start asking you questions. Well, there's a solution to that. I've never been a big fan of staying if you're on a tourist visa. I'm not a big fan of the whole exit clearance, which if you stay longer than six months in the Philippines, you have to do. So I used to always just kind of duck out every six, five and a half months. I would go fly somewhere, I'd spend a few nights in Malaysia, enjoy. There's a lot of great countries around here so not just the Philippines and then come back in and boom you're you get to start the whole journey again and it, it is also helps to kind of break things up you know maybe you've missed quality sidewalks walking around you missed uh, quality food and things like that well you can go and you can get these things and then come back to the Philippines and you kind of come back with fresh eyes again and you kind of a, a new appreciation of just how friendly the people are, how easy it is to, to get around and talk to these, you know, nice people and, and you know, appreciate the English skills. 
you know, because in a lot of other countries, you just don't have that. Now, in Japan, it wasn't hard. Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, we really didn't have a whole lot of difficulty. But it can be frustrating. I know when I lived in Vietnam, no English uh, actually spurred me, that and the dating, spurred me to come back to the Philippines. And I appreciated it more. But I still feel myself at times getting frustrated with the infrastructure, the organization, the organized chaos is what I call it, the driving and, you know, being in Tokyo. No one on the, no one on the streets at night. It's the middle of the night and there is a red light. Guess what? A Japanese person will sit there or stand there and wait for the green light to come on for the pedestrians to safely cross. And I'm like, wow, I mean, there's nobody around. <laughs> they could easily walk across the street. No one would be the wiser, but they wait. Uh, they will carry around a piece of garbage all day long until it's, they get back home, uh, until they can find a garbage can. And, uh, you know, that doesn't happen so much here. The trash on the ground, the burning of garbage and leaves and bad quality of the roads and things like that can kind of uh, frustrate you. And uh, again, so... This may not be for everyone. The Philippines may not be for anyone. The infrastructure could be a deal breaker. Could be that it's, you just come here and you find the prize. You find the great Filipina girl and you go live elsewhere. Anyway, let me know what your experience, what your thoughts are, questions, comments down below. Guys, if you are traveling out to the Philippines or anywhere in Southeast Asia, check out my Geo Travel Essentials for all the things I highly recommend for traveling or living out here in the Philippines or Southeast Asia. Check it out today at geonthephilippines.com. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you everyone next time.